Susan, a very good speaking to you. Uh, can you just start by telling us a little bit more about Planet Smart City? What do you guys do? Sure, Gustavo, happy to. So Planet Smart City started out initially as a real estate developer in Brazil, looking at doing three different types of vertical buildings, horizontal districts, as well as smart cities, up to 5,000 or more units. From that, we actually took our own experience and brought that into other emerging markets of the world, such as India, um, looking at expanding into further South America and Asia, but also America and here in Europe, where we've been able to take that same experience and translate it into an advisory unit, where instead of just doing affordable housing, we can expand that knowledge across many of the different verticals in real estate um, and look at then taking the, the digital tools that we created for ourselves in order to help for that digital transformation, again, across sectors and, and with our advisory. And then um, I was brought in um, to help start a Thinkubator, which is a think tank incubator accelerator to really, again, look at what we want to do in the future, what the future of real estate could be, bringing in experience from different sectors, different countries, and seeing how we could actually also leverage the um, the tangentials, mobility, the cities, uh, healthcare, and really start to achieve a lot of the outcomes that will give people the opportunity to then have the income and the, the lifestyles to go and buy the affordable housing or enjoy the real estate they're in even more. Very interesting. And talking about future, where you see the best opportunities in the market at the moment? You know, it, it's really where there's um, a convergence of a, a lack of certain types of, of assets or of, um, of really, you know, the, the need that's around. So part of it can be, you know, with, when we look at affordable housing, residential, there's gaps everywhere. True. And being able to get, you know, and, and affordable is not social housing. Um, where that's no, important as well, but it's, it's getting people their, their first home and, and being able to a own that asset. The other side is really, I think, looking at um, conversion possibilities. You know, when they say a third of the city in London is going to be un disoccupied in within three years, with probably no possibility of reoccupying that existing real estate. Well, what can we do to convert that into, let's say, housing for the people that are driving or taking the train two hours a day? Um, how do we turn that into maybe um, other, other um, unused assets into things like healthcare, education. So again, that, that cross or overlap across sectors and industries. Perfect. We hear a lot about technology, ESG, and how much those topics are impacting real estate. What are your views on that? So, you know, I've, I've been in sustainability since it was before even a, a topic. So more than 25 years. And, you know, I, I wholeheartedly believe in sustainability as a capitalist. It makes money, it creates value on a multi-dimensional level. When it's narrowed down to just ESG and you see so many people on the green bandwagon ignoring the blue environmental elements, ignoring all of the social, not really considering resilience unless it's something like a pandemic that smacks them in the face, but really looking at, at how you can harmonize the, the different elements that both world and real estate present with an agility that technology would bring that you could respond to those changing markets or changing world scenarios. When you look at the market with your experience, what's the biggest mistake you saw in the last few years in the real estate industry? You know, I, I think it would be, you know, the sheep mentality, um, the lack of diversification, everybody, you know, going after certain themes or certain technologies because, you know, that's what they heard should be done. Um, you know, real estate has the opportunity, you know, buildings are for people. We spend our in, most of our life, you know, and every yes. day in different buildings. We don't want to see the same buildings with the same technology and the same outcomes and the same strategies. So, you know, mix it up. Do, do something different. Focus on what creates value for your own stakeholder groups or your own occupants. And I like that. I like that. A final question. Is there anything that keeps you up at night? <laughs> You know, um, luckily nothing, because I live in a very well-designed home. I work in a, in a beautiful office, so I have is inspiring real estate around that, that allows me to, to sleep and, and to change the world and, and create the, the, the innovation and the, the forward movement that we want. But, you know, I think if I had to say, you know, um, kind of more, more philosophically what keeps me up at night is 
you know, really the fear that the world is becoming homogenized, that there isn't the, the, um, the differentiation, there's not, there's not the storyboards, there's not the inspiration um, and, and really the creativity. So I'm hoping to, you know, also help, um, help our industry and help the, the tangential industries to really bring back that creativity and start thinking about, you know, how do we make this world accessible to everybody? Um, that's a huge theme for me. Um, how we look at really embracing technology so that that technology will create something that, that, is, that we can't even fathom today, but that's inspirational and has beneficial outcomes that we can monetize. Susanna, thank you very much. Good thank speak you, to Gustavo. you, Gustavo.